very nice of you to let us come and see your painting. Can you... What? Have you been doing some painting lately? Yes, I work at it every day. Oh, you're working at it this morning? Except this morning. Oh, great. Because I was waiting for them to bring in the shopping. Oh, okay. So they changed their mind from bringing it in tomorrow to bringing it in today, which threw me off, which is very easy to do. You know, you get ready to paint and you find paint and you find that you can't paint because somebody's coming to bring they, they, the They've broken your concentration. Yes. In a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, you look entirely different today. It must be a different room. There's no direct light. Oh. So that it's diffused. And I've never seen you look so well. Oh, that's nice for you to hear. When did you do the painting over the fireplace, Bill? That was done in Florence, 1965. Tell us a little about it. It's from the, out of the window in a village Above Fiesole, which is above Florence. Above Fiesole? Fiesole. Oh, I haven't heard of that. It's the old, old Roman town before Florence was built. The picture here on the left of this was done at Wakefield near Ottawa. And the one on the far corner on the right would be the west side of this house. They're lovely. Scantily. Five years at one stretch. Mm -hmm. And then I was there twice before, or once again after and once before. But for many like short periods, like summertime. And the five years was Oh, Which is north of Mount oh, I know Zephyr very well. I Do drive you? through it every time I go up to the college. Oh, I see. Well, I, I lived there from the mm -hmm. But there, the, an aunt of mine had studied drawing and painting at a college in St. Catherine. And, and left the, one of the paintings, one of the pictures in the house was a Greek, of a Greek sculpture fixed in my memory the rest of my life. Every night I went to bed, I looked at this picture of my old day. Yeah, it was really um, remarkably, because we didn't even have electricity in 1924, not a Model E type. Here they had, one of them had Cadillac, and one of them had a Rio. So, when those cars appeared in Zephyr, it was something. <laughs> <laughs> they were quite out of place again. But those are, those are all sisters. And he frightened, he frightened me. And the way of dealing with that was to do a model, way to do a drawing of the person. It, it, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, it, it's uh, objectified. And I don't know what the psychology is in me, but it, it makes a difference. It was easy to get along with that. Easy to get along with. After you've done this model. People came in from the village to look at this thing with only about that eyes. A man beating a dog who was the older. He, he was the man the village was more <coughs> isolated, more independent than they are now. Oh, yeah. It was not quite different. And you became interested in classical art. Yes. Yeah, the man would say, well, nobody's interested in that. So he said, there's no, what you really should be doing are advertisements for Coca-Cola. Right. Okay. Well, I'm still in the days when you're supposed to go first. Well, I would normally do that, except I don't know where, where to go. <laughs> well, I'll sit down. You want me to sit down? Yes. Be comfortable. Absolutely. Please do I just get this oh. one. I'll tell you. All right. I love the drawing. Yeah, I like the drawing, and I'm trying to... Uh, where's that being taken? Just against the window. Well, that'll be a similar. Yeah. There, there are two more drawings on the back that you'd be interested in. <coughs> 
on the back of that what you're holding. Oh. Yeah, there, then slide it on the floor. Did she have two models? Uh, no, well that day was the same model, but the second color. Oh, I see. But the, the painting is yet later. There are, I've got masses of drawing. Well, it's just so uh, sim simplified. It's simplified, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it fits the space. But what makes the difference is the dark background and the light, whereas the drawing holds together better because all the same color. Now it took me a while to realize that it, if I did a painting with a dark background, I'd get a very different result. Every work you do is, is another experiment, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. That's why it's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 1960, I think. Of a new that paid for an exhibition I had there. Well, I've never seen it again. Don't know where it went. Hmm. <laughs> it uh, was exhibited. It was Third Avenue. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to think of the name of it out there in Galway. Um? Well, it was, um, I started painting and drawing with Carl Schaefer. Oh, yeah. But I don't think he had much influence on what I did. I wouldn't think so, knowing no. his work. No. And, uh, and then Alan Jarvis was there. And he got me doing modeling and portrait heads in um, the sculpture, like, but modeling. And then later on, I had some lessons from Charles Comfort. Well, that didn't work. At all. It didn't interest me at all. No, I can what, understand what that. What they were doing. Yeah. So they said that there was no point in my carrying on. And uh, I was interested in the French, French painting from, uh, let me see, one of the first paintings I saw was here on Monet in the Art Gallery in Ontario. And then I was interested in the Baroque and the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And that held all the way through the trip to Italy. And when I got back here, I began to turn to post post-impressionist French painting, which I, that's where I've remained. And that's, I think that's what, uh, about your work, what appeals to me so much. Yeah. I'm in his house to the Dominion store with a peak cap and a long overcoat to the ground. Edith's meeting him and saying she felt she should offer him a dime because he looked as though he hadn't eaten for a week. Then we discovered that the next door neighbor was handing in his dinner at night, that he was very well off, and then he he kept saying he didn't like color. So I gathered that he was sort of bored with his folder, which I had no business to think about. But it struck me that it was so odd that the son of the painter wouldn't like color. He would like black and white. Uh, what else do I know about him? Very little, that, except that only a few people could get into conversation with him. He just didn't want to be bothered with any kind of conversation. It had to be the sort of thing that he uh, was thinking at the time. But 
then you knew what happened to him. There's a, an accident, accident, an automobile accident, crossing Young Street, and broke his shoulder. And I never saw him after that. I think he went into a nursing home not long after that, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Is the cat in this too? Yeah. Why not? Sure. Yeah. What about uh, what about his uh, his uh, connection backwards to his father, the group of seven? Uh, he really never he never touched on that any time I met him. I wonder if it I wonder if it maybe was history that he didn't want to repeat, so to speak. Uh, Quite possibly it was that. They moved there, I think they said 1913. 1913 or so? Yes. And that I would have uh, met him around 1970. Uh-huh. And so... but That's when you moved here? I moved here in 1968. Uh-huh. From Montreal, where I had a studio. Uh -huh. In the old quarter. Mm-hmm. And... I had I had come back from Italy and was determined that I wouldn't do any more teaching. I would sell paintings, which of course didn't didn't really work. So I had to teach privately. And I I was offered a studio in the old quarter by the Re the Reeford Shipping Company, on one of the old buildings, with a second floor that's completely empty. And that was just of Place d'Armes with windows that looked into the garden of uh, Notre Dame ch Church. Now you you said at one point you taught with... Then up until 1952 I taught um, classes in drawing and painting with Arthur Lisber as the director of, of a school which um, had studios in the building, the Art Association building. Is that, was that connected to? That's now the Montreal Art Gallery. Okay, was that connected to, connected to the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts? Yes. That's the building right behind. That's, that's where you would have gone. That's where I went to yeah, class. Oh, well, that's where I was teaching. Okay, did, did Arthur Lismer at one point have very long hair? Rather longer than most people. Yeah, and it was down to his shoulders? No. Almost? No, it was the cut, they, they said that Mrs. Lismer must, must have cut it. It was cut as though there had been a bowl on his head, and he cut... And he cut it, but around it was very the, thick yeah, around thick, here. Thick and bald on top. Okay, okay, you know. yeah. I remember, I remember this... And he was very active, always on the move. Mm. And he... <coughs> he got me to teach, along with Goodrich Roberts, and the Tenoncourt, I mm. think he'd still be there, and Alan Harrison. Did you, did you ever acquire any of his paintings? I didn't, I didn't, I never saw many of his paintings. No? No. I've never seen many of them, eh? No. Well, there was a memorial exhibition in Ottawa with um, the, the then Governor General who was, um, I can't remember, he's Viscount somebody, had been in the army in the Second World War. Um, I know who you mean. His brother was an actor? P possibly, yeah. No, that's Massey. That's Massey, Vincent Massey? Yeah, it wasn't Vincent Massey. Oh, okay. It was a later, later man. Vincent Massey was there in the 40s, I think. Cut. A letter of peasant type in Russia before the revolution. And what did that have to do with Thoreau? Well, he... He gave that impression. He, he looked as though he hadn't enough to live on. And she said she always felt she should offer him a dime, but knowing who he was, she felt that it wasn't a disguise, that he, he wasn't as badly off as he made out. He was, re he was very uh, comical, had amusing stories to tell, which I can't remember. And he said very little about his father, if, if anything. Did you ever have the feeling that Thoreau maybe um, felt 
felt kind of run down with all of that they really suppressed his talent because he did have quite a bit of talent. He had great talent. He did um, a lot of um, Christmas cards. He did black, black and white uh, woodcuts. Well, then we didn't see him after the accident on uh, um, Young Street. He used to have lunch in the Dominion store, standing with a sandwich looking out the window on the Young Street, oh, which is so bleak, you know. Cut. Anyway. No. Okay, say that over again. Well, Lesmer would say to his teachers, not to bother teaching anything, just stand in the middle of the class and they get it by osmosis. And I tend to think I'm probably a good example of that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them is Patterson Ewan, you know. That was more about him. Do you remember him? No, no. Was he there then? What sort of student was he? Terrible. Well, tell us about him. Patterson Ewan didn't appear to me to have any talent at all. I couldn't make head or tail of it. Was he in your class for very long? Well, I wouldn't have seen him maybe over a period of a year. But I did visit his apartment when he was married to the ballet dancer, whose name I can't remember. Francois? Francois, yeah. Well, Francois was a very good student. And what did you think of the apartment? Not very much. It wasn't. It was Elgin Terrace, uh, off Peel Street, going up the, from Peel up to Pine. It, you know, it's right in the center. And it was a, a, row, a row of houses in a sort of, um, between Gothic and uh, Georgian, a row of houses going back to maybe, if Stanley Street was the next street, it would be between Peel and Stanley. What, what took Arthur Lismer to Montreal? He thought that he would be chosen as head of the fine art department at the University of Toronto mm -hmm. in 1936 or 7. But they, uh, they chose people who, as they said, had the right papers. Well, he he seemed to be very much annoyed about that and left the city and then started teaching Montreal. That's when he went down. And Montreal. took quite a few people with him mm -hmm. from Toronto. Set up a sort of a, an art, artist colony as such? Yeah, yes. He used to refer to Toronto as Florence and Montreal was Venice. <laughs> <laughs> Which had some truth in it. Very, very true. Did you like teaching near Bill? Yes, I did. I didn't like teaching with the Ontario College of Education. Oh. I couldn't get along with them. I mean, I remember having to, t they, having to teach geography in North Africa. And the problem was that above the equator going north, it it rained in the let's say in the winter and in the then when the sun went to the south it rained in the summer. <laughs> At which point I got I entirely that. confused and said, "Who cares anyhow?" <laughs> which upset the critic teachers. Now I wasn't uh, geared to teach um, academic business. So, there we go.